Wouldn't you like to write a story? Don't you wish that you knew how? You could be a famous author. So listen up and find out how. Hi, my name is Liz Shanks, and I'd like to welcome you to a story time we're calling Listen, Learn, and Grow. Uh, we're hoping that it will be a way to introduce your children to some wonderful books, both classic and new authors, the importance of reading in a child's life, and the way books can help their imaginations to grow. Books have been a source of entertainment and imagination long before there was internet, video games, TV, even books themselves. Children use their imaginations as a form of entertainment. Every time a child picks up a book, his imagination goes along for the ride. Books are so very portable. They can take a child anywhere, and that child can take that book anywhere. It's a lifelong learning experience that begins now. That is, books as tools for learning and entertainment. And we're hoping that Listen, Learn, and Grow is going to become a tool that you parents can use as an asset for helping your child to become a lifelong learner and reader. And so do you kids. Let's get started. I can hardly wait. You are an essential part of this. A book is just a book until someone picks it up and opens it and reads it. Otherwise, it just sits there. It's an animate object. And so to have students that are willing to sit here and listen to a story, to bring it alive, is a wonderful, wonderful thing. And that's what we're going to do today. The first book that we're going to read is a story about a rather odd woman called Virginia Vincent Folsom. And she's rather eccentric, meaning she's a little quirky. You know, she's, she's not kind of run of the mill. She, uh, one of the things that's quirky about her is she's got a companion. And her companion is not a human companion. It's a pet pig who she calls Petunia. And her name, instead of Virginia Vincent Folsom, people call her Ginger. Now, Ginger has a motto. You are what you wear. And we're going to find out how when Virginia leaves her pet, Petunia, alone, how that motto, you are what you wear, gets both of them into a whole lot of complicated trouble. Our first book is called Ginger and Petunia by Patricia Polacco. Virginia Vincent Folsom is a very elegant lady. She lives in a scrumptious house in a very <clears throat> exclusive neighborhood. Ginger, as she is called, drives a snappy little red sports car, and she collects fine wine, and she is a gourmet cook. And clothes, beautiful clothes, are her passion. You are what you wear, she always says. She's also a brilliant pianist who gave up the stage to teach a dazzling array of musical prodigies. That is children and young people who have a special talent for music. She accepts only the most promising of young musicians. The waiting list is endless to get in to see her. She hears her students from 7.30 in the morning until 5 o'clock in the afternoon. She listens, and she listens, and she listens. But the most astonishing thing about Ginger is Petunia, her pet pig. 
Petunia lives right in Ginger's house, just under the staircase, next to the grand piano. Ginger does everything for Petunia. She cooks for her. She sews blankets for her and takes her for rides in her little red car. Ginger models every new outfit she buys for Petunia first. And practically every evening, they sit and they listen to the grand opera together. Ginger even had a mud hole installed in the backyard for Petunia because, of course, pigs love to wallow in the mud. Of course, she built a lovely gazebo or place where she could sort of contemplate things, music, over the top of the mud hole and made it look like a spa. My Petunia does so love her mud soaks, Ginger always said. One day, an engraved invitation arrived for Ginger all the way from England. I've been invited to be the guest soloist at the International Congress of Pianists in London, Ginger trumpeted. Ginger was beside herself with excitement. But I will have to leave for England tomorrow, and oh dear, there's no food in the house and a whole week of lessons. They'll have to be rescheduled, and there's all sorts of social obligations. And you, Petunia, who is going to take care of you, cried Ginger. In no time at all, Ginger called House Sitters Incorporated and arranged for someone to come and take care of Petunia and do everything on her to-do list. The next morning, it was time for Ginger to catch her flight to England. Well, my dear Petunia, I will miss you so very, very much, Ginger whispered as she kissed the pig's snout. Someone will be here within the hour to take care of you. I will be back before you know it. Petunia watched as the cab left for the airport. The house was so empty. It was so quiet. This was the very first time that Ginger had ever gone away and left Petunia. She went to her little room under the stairs and cuddled under her favorite blanket and waited for the house sitters arrived. She waited, she waited, and she waited. No one came. Just then the phone rang and a raspy voice left a message. Mrs. Folsom, this is the agency, and, well, it seems our house sitter will not be able to come. She wasn't very happy about the pig. I'm sure you'll find someone else before you leave. And then the house sitter hung up. Petunia's eyes widened. She curled up in her blankets and thought and thought. After Petunia thought for the longest time, she went to the kitchen and she peered into the refrigerator. It was practically empty, just as Ginger had said, but there were a few vegetables in the crisper. Three eggs, some flour, a half a quart of milk, and a bottle of rare wine. A smile crept across Petunia's face as she put on Ginger's apron. She chopped the vegetables as she had seen Ginger do so many times, and she sautéed them in a perfect vintage virgin olive oil, just the way Ginger had shown her.